What is up, ladies and gentlemen? It is 11.02 a.m. It is Sunday. It is September 16th. We are a little bit late um, starting the show, but Tezrim has joined chat. Gentlemen, yeah, it's just me at this point in time. Okay, there is I am Ruts. What's going on? So a few people are starting to filter in. And today, of course, obviously, we're talking about Sunday and when it comes to major VR gaming news, Sunday is not going to be a big day for that. We're probably not going to get any major announcements, game trailers, uh, release dates of games. We're not going to get a lot of stuff uh, as far as that is concerned. However, today is kind of interesting because we do have a lot of Pimax information that is coming in. Obviously, all of these M2 selected influencers that got their hands on the early Pimax headsets, these M2 versions, the uh, the NDA is basically up. So they are allowed to basically say anything they want to say about that. And a lot of that information is pouring in. So we are going to take a look at that. The one thing I do want to caution everybody, though, is I'm not a big time Pimax guy. Like I'm not kickstarting it and I'm not like super, super into the Pimax thing. So I've kind of been tangentially checking this stuff out and not being like super focused on it, but we will cover this. We will get into this. So that is good. And I am Rutz is talking about playing Winlands 2. He's been playing through Winlands 2 and he believes the game is amazing. Although the first boss was easy, took me five minutes. Okay, I am Rutz. If the first boss was easy, you are a god. Or you just kind of figured out how to deal with that first boss. It took me a long time to deal with the first boss. And I believe Mamefan also said that it took him a while to deal with the first boss. He thought the first boss was too hard. But... It really depends on the kind of gamer you are. And so if you got to that first boss and you figured out what you got to do to kill that first boss, then you could probably figure that out and it doesn't take you so long. So I am Rutz. You're probably a really good gamer and I probably really suck or one of those things is true. T-Dub. Hey, folks. What's up, T-Dub? Sponge720. Hey, what is going on? Jim Hall is checking in. And Jason Olson. What's up, Anthony? What is up? What is going on? And basically, it's Sunday fun day, folks. You know, this is a fun time. It's Sunday. We've just finished uh, a pretty good week for VR. You know, there were some interesting things that happened this last week in VR. And next week is going to be very good as well. Because remember, on the 18th, Tuesday, next Tuesday, transference will be available Blind will be available. Downward Spiral Aura Station on PlayStation VR will be available. Unearthing Mars 2 will be available. There's a number of games that are coming out on September 18th next Tuesday. So we got some good stuff happening next week. We got this Pimax talk. But you know what I wanted to get into today, guys, is I was worried that there really wasn't going to be much to talk about today. I know we have the Pimax stuff, and we'll get into that, but I also wanted to talk about what I think are the best VR games that have released over the most recent months. And so what I decided to do, I decided to uh, kick back and figure out what are the best VR games that I have personally played over the months of July, the months of August, and the months of September. And I decided to make my own list of the absolute best VR games that I've played in recent months. So this is the top 10 best VR games recent releases. Now this list here is my list. This is my personal list. Just thinking about all the great stuff that I've played recently and then trying to put it into some type of order I went ahead and made up this list, and I thought it could be uh, an interesting point of discussion here, and we can talk about some of the good stuff that we've had. So all of these 10 games here, they were all released either July, 
August or September. So these are recent releases and I feel like all of them are really, really good. And so number one for me, Pixel Ripped 1989. If I have to think about all the games that have recently come out, I think I would have to put Pixel Ripped 1989 number one on my list just because I feel like when it really did things right, it did things really right, and it made me excited for the future of how VR and retro gaming can combine and make this new kind of phenomenon where you can play a retro game and then it leaks out into your world within VR. And that's what Pixel Ripped 1989 does so very well. Such great production value, such great polish. Like every little sound effect, every little bleep and bloop, transitions, production value, it is there. Pixel Rep 1989, that is my number one. Number two is Winlands 2. And I Am Ruts was just talking about Winlands 2. This just came out on September 12th, and I have it number two on my list. And you know what, folks? I could continue to play Winlands 2, and it might jump ahead of Pixel Rip. That is how good Winlands 2 is. Winlands 2 is actually a damn good game, at least for me. I really love it. It is just, uh, it's just a beautiful experience. Okay, number three, Hellblade, Senua's Sacrifice. Wonderful game. Uh, a really interesting game. The puzzles can kind of, uh, you know, the puzzles can be kind of hard and difficult at certain times, but just uh, a, a beautiful experience. Third person VR gaming is here to stay. People need to get over it. Hellblade, Senua's Sacrifice, very good. Now, number four, I have virtual, virtual reality in my four spot. And I played this game a while back. I played it on the Oculus Rift when it first came to Oculus Rift. Um, so I, I'm kind of cheating by having this game on this list. But it just arrived on September 7th for everybody uh, that has an HTC Vive on Steam. It has just arrived. So I will cheat a little bit with virtual virtual reality in there at number four. Number five is Seeking Dawn. Seeking Dawn is a game I haven't been able to put a lot of time into this because all these other games are constantly coming out. And, and we live in an era where we want to cover all the newest stuff. And so I haven't spent a lot of time in Seeking Dawn, but I was enjoying what I was experiencing. Really want to go back to that. Number six, Firewall, Zero Hour. And I know people, there's probably some people that look at this list and they see Firewall down there at number six. And they probably think, Anthony, what the hell is wrong with you? There's no way Firewall should be that far down the list. Firewall should be top three at the bare minimum. But you know what? I'm just not, like, this isn't my type of game. So I put Firewall there. I still like it. I'm enjoying Firewall. It's All of these games are great. All of these games are great. But I have Firewall at six. Number seventh is The Persistence a game that I, I would like to go back to as well. Again, so many games start piling up. You get a little ways into a game, you experience a little bit of it, you're enjoying it, but then you gotta move on to some other games. And that's kind of the way it was with me for the persistence. Number eight, Megaton Rainfall. I still feel this is a super solid, interesting game with the War of the Worlds kind of a concept. And number nine is Torn. Torn's a game I still need to kind of go back to as well. Haven't finished it. And 10 is Electronauts. So this is my top 10 of games that have released in August, Ju uh, July, August, and September. And I'm curious about you guys, everybody that is in chat, is there a game that released in July or August or September that you believe belongs on this list that isn't on this list? You can't believe it's not on this list. Um, what are those games? Now, let me check chat real quick and see what people are saying here. Um, Jason Olson says, how well is Revive working for Vive players on these new games? And that's a good question. I do not have an HTC Vive right now, and I haven't used Revive in a long time, but it always was a little bit hit or miss. And a lot of times you could play all this stuff but sometimes the translation just didn't work out very good. Like I always felt the Mage's Tale. When the Mage's Tale first hit the Oculus Rift, I did not have an Oculus. I had a Vive and I had Revive. And I was playing the Mage's Tale on a regular basis. But I felt like I was really struggling with the controls. So that can be an issue. Load 
ENT, Load Entertainment maybe, or Load Int, says, didn't you completely dislike and was very negative about Hellblade before? What changed your mind? Um, I don't think I was negative about Hellblade. Um, I was, I got stuck in a lot of places in Hellblade. Uh, but so that might have came off a little bit negative that I would get stuck in certain spots. But now I'm not negative. Help the only, I mean, I have some criticisms of Hellblade from the standpoint that I don't feel like there's a ton of agency in what you're doing. It's in, in a lot of ways, the game kind of plays itself and even the combat kind of plays itself a little bit. Um, it's kind of, you know, the Assassin's Creed kind of a combat thing. But no, I, I like Hellblade. I do like Hellblade. And Jim Hall says, I've only played one game on that list. VVR on my lowly go. Waiting to hear from Oculus Connect 5. And I Am Rut says, I didn't care for the whispering. Okay, all the little voices and stuff. Yeah, a little bit weird here. Now, I'm showing you guys what I believe are the top 10 best VR games that have recently released, but you know what? There's other games that came out in July, August, and September that didn't make this list, and let's take a look at those real quick. Let's take a look at the games that missed the cutoff, and these are the games that, in my opinion, they didn't make my top 10. Now, I'm not saying that any of these games are bad, they just didn't make my top 10. So we have Bow to Blood on PlayStation VR. That was a late August release. We have Nog that arrived on Steam and Oculus around mid-July. Tea Time Golf, very late August release. Not a bad game by any stretch of the imagination. So if Phil Yarn checks in, don't get too pissed off about that. Marvel Powers United VR, probably the most disappointing game of the bunch to be sure. That released on July 26. It is not in my top 10 whatsoever. Unknown Fate, the, the jury's still out on that. I need to play more of that. It didn't make my top 10 list. That was September 6. Kiaro and the Elixir of Life, which I've been playing that recently. Very interesting. Didn't quite make my cutoff, but again, haven't had a ton of time with it. So maybe it could jump into my cutoff with more play. And then Vroom Kaboom. On August 14th. So these are the games that missed the cutoff for me. So basically, this is just kind of a topic I wanted to throw in there. What are the best games of July, August, and September? And, you know, I, I went ahead and gave you guys my top 10. And then what are the games? And then the games that missed the cut. So basically, that is a topic that we can get into. So throughout this show today, if anybody wants to mention anything that they've played in July, August, or September that is really big, didn't make this list, we can talk about that. Or we can, we can get a little bit deeper into the talk about some of these other games. Okay, now let's switch over to Pimax. And so I grabbed a MRTV video and I grabbed a small segment of that video where Sebastian is talking about these Pimaxes. It's just like a three minute clip, but let's go ahead and check this out. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. I'm gonna fire this up. I have not seen a lot of this Pimax information today. I'm late to the party. I had to go to a breakfast thing. I have not looked at the news, so I'm a little bit late to the party. So let's go ahead and check this out and then we can discuss it together. Okay, here is Sebastian. The Pimax 8K and the Pimax 5K Plus coming up. Hi and welcome to MOTV. My name is Sebastian Ang. And if this is your first time here, and if you're just as excited Wait a minute, I think VR, I might have grabbed the wrong ARSB, video. <laughs> Hold on a second here. So uh, that's the full video, I think. I'm trying to grab the little snippet that I just took that was only three minutes. Let's see here. Um, hmm. Yeah, this is only three minutes. This is weird. Did I only... Oh, I must have screwed up when I did the video. Damn it. Must have screwed up. Because I tried... I, I What I was trying to do is just take a little three-minute section the answer is of, a resounding yes. of this video. This but let, we can listen in real quick and just see what he has Pimax to say about 8K it. The Pimax 8K and the Pimax 5K Plus coming up. Yeah, damn it, I must have screwed up. I, I tried to cut out Hi, a three-minute segment of this. My name is Sebastian Ang, 
And if this is your first time here, and if you're just as excited about VR than AR as me, then subscribe now and click on the bell button so you don't miss anything. So the long wait is finally coming to an end. These are the final versions of the Pimax 8K and the Pimax 5K Plus that will be delivered to backers and that the general public will be able to purchase really, really soon. But the question is, was it worth the wait? Are these devices the next gen devices that VR enthusiasts have been waiting for and that will catapult the VR industry to the next level? The answer is a resounding yes. I'm happy to a tell you. A resounding yes. Okay, yeah, I screwed up. My apologies, folks. I grabbed, I tried to cut a small little segment out of the video where he was showing, um, he was basically showing like the different resolutions and like a comparisons of the resolutions and stuff. And so what we can do though, is I do have a website up here where uh, Voodoo DE is giving his take on it. This is over here. This is on the Oculus forum. And they do have a bit of breakdown of all the different things about it. Design, comfort, weight, installation and setup, display, text reading, colors, black values, screen door effect, field of view, the glare, the distortion, the sweet spot tracking, really nice breakdown here. So definitely you can check, you can go over to the Oculus subreddit and Voodoo DE's review of the Pimax. This is a pretty good breakdown here. And some of the things that I did notice um, initially, so glare God rays, God rays or glare effects are as good as not visible. A really great job by Pimax, much better than the Rift or Vive Pro. Uh, so that is nice. Only very small God rays visible. That is really good. And then of course the lenses, the distortion. This is obviously one of the big problems. And basically the deal is, is that, well, this guy's saying he basically got used to it. He doesn't really notice it anymore. Yes, it is there, but that eventually you'll play the game and within a matter of minutes, you'll forget about the distortion at the outer edges. Of course, you can also change the size of the field of view. You can lower it a little bit and then you can get rid of the distortion. Now, one of the things that he, ha one of the things they did say here is that, Distortion is more noticeable in games where you turn and move fast, like Pavlov, Onward, Skyrim, where you're constantly turning. Um, and in games where you sit and don't look to the side very much, like a racing simulation, you will never notice the distortion. And there wasn't a difference between the 5K Plus and the 8K um, because they have the same lenses. And then, of course, we did hear about the sweet spot for these Pimax headsets. And apparently the sweet spot is gigantic. It is one of the biggest sweet spots out there. There are IPD settings. You can go between a range of 59 and 72. My IPD is way up there at 72. So that is good that it go, it runs all the way up there. Um, and then we have all these different benchmarks, uh, cleaning them, uh, you know, I mean, just anything you could possibly imagine. Motion sickness. No difference for him between the Vibe Pro, the Rift, and Pimax with motion sickness. Bottom line, in the conclusion, is the Pimax did a very good job. The big field of view is an absolute blast and kills every other consumer headset on the market. They're not talking about the ultra-expensive Star VR or the x -Tal, but he's saying basically the Vive Pro is totally killed in his opinion. No one needs it anymore. Now, what is one of the worst things though, is the black levels. And uh, where is it on here where they get into the black levels? Um, the biggest dis disadvantage of the Pimax headsets, areas that should be deep black are more gray white on the Pimax LCDs. And that doesn't look very good on dark games like horror games or something like Elite Dangerous. You can play the games, of course, but it kills the immersion a little bit. Now, to me, this is a bit of a Debbie Downer for me as far as I'm concerned in regards to these black levels. Because one of the things that I have noticed, um, one of the things that I have noticed in regards to these modern day headsets and like on the PlayStation VR, on, on my Oculus Rift, basically all these different headsets, you'll be in these different experiences where you would like everything to be really black so it can get you into the experience. And it's not very black. And you see the Murrah, 
you see this like greenish colored star field, like these little specks, these little dust specks that are kind of greenish on a black background. That is Murrah. And we have to deal with Murrah on PlayStation VR. It can be very disappointing. Um, on the Oculus Rift, it's not very good either. Same thing with HTC Vive. We don't really have a great headset from a standpoint of giving us these really inky blacks, these really dark, vibrant blacks, which is truly unfortunate because a lot of times in a lot of these VR experiences, they want you to feel like you're in a complete darkness situation and then bring you into the light. But they can't do that. They, they can't give you that sensation because you're seeing the Mura. Now, here's the thing. When you, when you get these Pimaxes and it's, it's LCD, which is one of the reasons like PlayStation VR is LCD, I think, right? Is it, is it an LCD that's in PlayStation VR? I think that's one of the reasons the Mura is so much not very good on PlayStation VR. And... That's going to be a bit of a problem here. Um, you're not going to want to play a lot of horror games and a lot of dark games that, that kind of try to give you that kind of atmosphere with these Pimaxes. That's a bit of a Debbie Downer. But that appears to be pretty much, that and the distortion appear to be pretty much the big deal here. But basically the bottom line with pretty much everybody that has been talking about this is that once you try these out and use them for a while, you're not going to want to go back to a regular headset. So that sounds very good. That does sound very good. We've also have some information here. Let me let me switch over to uh, to this right here. We're talking about the text reading. Most people will think it's much better to read small text with the Pimax headsets as they have a lot smaller screen door effect. And he's saying that's right. But you have to notice that you need a really high resolution to do this. And it's going to be a problem for now as the graphics cards won't have this kind of performance on most games. On a medium resolution, you will see it on the 5K Plus as good as the Vive Pro. It's also very important that the Pimax 8K will need an even higher resolution than the 5K Plus to see small text clear. So... Basically, what it sounds like is the biggest downsides with this Pimax is going to be reading small tech text, and it's going to be the lack of like really legit blacks. And then there also, of course, is this distortion at the edges, and that appears to be the major problem there. PSVR is OLED, okay, it is OLED, but PSVR does not have very good like like the big problem with PSVR, in my opinion is really the 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 mura like it's got pretty bad mura so that's kind of what we're hearing here about this pimax and um if i switch over here uh let's see i had uh yeah okay so road to vr um if we go over to road to vr they have this story about the pimax 8k pre-production previews are emerging from select backers and basically a lot of the same information um here, here's an example. You can see the Pimax lenses compared to, say, a Vive Pro. This is courtesy of Thomas Voodoo DE Porsche, which I'll probably be mispronouncing. But yeah, we're getting some information here. The 8K runs at 80 hertz. 5K plus is at 90 hertz. Um, and he tried it out on a 1080 Ti with the Core i7 8700K, 32 gigs of RAM and ran a series of benchmarks using popular VR titles running at medium settings and found that none of them were able to maintain the headset's native refresh rate on average, meaning graphical settings would need to be further reduced. So that's the good news. I mean, well, <laughs> the good news is basically you're, you're going to need a 2080 Ti. If you really want to push this stuff, you are going to need a 2080 Ti. So that's kind of what we're looking at there. Okay, so TidyBoy72 says, I watched Sebastian earlier and I'm completely convinced on the Pimax 5K, the 5K Plus, right? It's exactly what I've been holding back for. It's exactly what he's been waiting for. Pimax 5K Plus has really good clarity and you can see small text great on it. Better than the Pimax 8K, 
All of this is in the MRTV review, which we do have a little bit of video right here, but I accidentally grabbed the first three minutes of it. I was trying to grab a very specific three minute section of it where there was some comparison footage that I thought was pretty good. Somehow screwed up on that. Tidyboy72 says he doesn't care about the blacks. I don't know. I think you are going to care about the blacks when you get in there. Uh, Sar N says, I have no opinion regarding blacks. It might be overrated, but I guess other second gen might nail it plus FOV. Currently, I think 5K plus will be a good product. Sar N, so you are a Kickstarter backer. Were you able to switch over to the 5K plus? So is that what you're going to be receiving? The 5K plus? Because that seems to be where to go. I think a lot of people, based on what a lot of people are saying, I think the 5K plus looks like the headset to have until somebody else can do better than that. Like it looks like, like I'm, I'm thinking the 5K plus is a great bridge the gap kind of a headset until we see what Oculus has with CB2, until we see what HTC has with a legit, a legit 2.0 vibe, a legit next gen vibe. Okay, Sar N says he ordered the 8K plus the 5K, but he thinks he's going to downgrade to two 5K pluses. And I am Rhett says my concerns is they will change the 5K plus tomorrow when they need to copy someone else another company releases. Yeah, I mean, you know, we can get into that. I'm, my negative concerns on Pimax is. All of this sounds like great news. Like we're we're hearing all of this really good news about the Pimax right now. But one of the issues that we have to remember about this is that they're hoping to deliver this by like December, by January. So I kind of want to wait and see like when are they really delivering this? Like when is it really going to happen? This 5K plus model. When are people really going to have their hands on it? When are thousands of people going to have our hands on it? Because one of the things that I've done for myself personally is I'm just not getting very excited and hyped up about this because I'm kind of like, prove it to me. Prove it to me that you're going to deliver thousands and thousands of these. Prove it to me that they're going to be working great for a number of months. You know, prove this stuff to me. And, and I kind of like believing, seeing is believing. And so I kind of want to wait until these things are actually out there. They're actually in people's hands. They actually get it. Sar N says, they say end of September 2018, but I'm not holding my breath. But I read somewhere else. I know I read somewhere else that they're, well, they're hoping that, I mean, Sebastian talked to the president of Pimax and he was talking in Mandarin and everything. And they said that they really want to try to get the headsets to their backers prior to Christmas and that they were like 90% sure that they will be able to get this headset to their backers prior to Christmas. Okay, and so will it really happen? You know, yeah, Sarin says 90% should get it by end of the year. And I'm just kind of, right now, I'm, I'm kind of in the, the opinion that Prove it to me, you know, kind of is what I'm waiting for. And and so, you know, I know you guys that you guys are that your backers, you're obviously super excited. You're super jazzed because it looks like this might actually break for you. And this might be a really incredible, awesome situation. And I'm not trying to rain on that parade. I'm just saying, like, I just want to be proven because I remember I remember back to December 2017, there was literally, and I know you guys remember this. There were Pimax Kickstarter backers last December, last December, 2017, that really thought they were going to get their Pimaxes in like late January. So we've heard a lot of promises and we're kind of like wondering, okay, will these promises actually really happen? Chris Gold says, none of this is interesting to me. Better to wait until true Gen 2 before splashing out more cash on this Gen. Sarin says, I agree with your point of view. They still need to prove it. Sponge720 says, I won't get this either, but I like it's putting pressure on Oculus and Vive to step up their Gen 2 headsets. That is a beautiful thing. I mean, regardless of what you believe about Pimax, some of these reviewers are saying, like they're literally saying that 
these Pimax headsets basically kill what we currently have. That once you start using this on a regular basis, you're never going to want to put a Vive on again. You're never going to want to put an Oculus Rift on again because you are going to be taken to a new world, a new plateau, and you're not going to want to go back. You're not going to want to downgrade that these have changed the game. That's what a lot of people think. And the good news about that, even if that hype is a little bit overrated, that hype is going to trickle over to Oculus. It's going to trickle over to HTC. And they do have to think about, does this change the game a little bit? You know, Oculus, they need to get their hands on one of these things. HTC needs to get their hands on one of these things. They need to test it out. They need to run it through its paces. They need to know what the competition is capable of. Now, the good news is they're battling a very small Chinese company that who knows how much real support this company has. Who knows if this company is really going to be able to back up all their promises. We've already seen that they've been a little bit shaky with it. So Oculus and HTC, they're going to have to analyze this and figure out what are they going to do? Now, we know they're not going hammerhead shark right away. That's probably not going to happen. Of course, Oculus uh, talked about their 140 degree half dome and all of that. And so it's going to be super interesting because this is coming out right before Oculus Connect 5. We're getting all of this Pimax information. So it'll be cool to see how quickly this translates over to putting that pressure on Oculus, putting that pressure on HTC and any other company that wants to get into the headset game. Chris Gould says, if we knew what was being developed now behind closed doors, we would not be interested in this. Yes, but it always becomes a situation where you can always wait on the sidelines for a better product. There are people right now that are saying the same exact thing, Chris Gould, about a regular HTC Vive and a regular Oculus Rift. And that's what they were saying in 2016 when the Vive and Rift first came out. I remember I was on NeoGAF, I was in forums in NeoGAF, and people were saying, this is just the first crappy generation. Let this generation do what it has to do and let's wait for the next one when they figure everything out. They basically were saying anybody that owns a Vive and a Rift, you guys are beta testers. You guys are the early adopter beta testers. You're gonna get the crappy stuff. And then version two is when the real mass market is gonna jump aboard. So let's skip this entire generation. There's people that had this attitude and the problem with that is all of 2016, all of 2017, and all of 2018, these people are sitting on the sidelines while we are enjoying some really good shit all of those years. So there's always going to be something better. Now, Chris Golda says, hey, I I'm, I'm really talking about the big developers, though. The big developers. I'm not really talking about individual people. So, yeah, there is that. So this is the Pimax news that is coming out. And if I switch over here... This is the Vive subreddit. There's a lot more talk here on the Vive subreddit about it. Almost every other th every other post here seems to be Pimax related. Pimax headset review after NDA is finally over. Voodoo DE. That's more information there. The Pimax 8K 5K plus review. Uh, the next big thing in VR is here. The MRTV review. We got Pimax headsets with almost 100% sweet spot. Um, and there, there's a first post NDA look at the Pimax 8K, 5K plus. So there is a lot of Pimax talk that is going on on the Vive subreddit. I thought maybe I could check out a few of these threads just to see, okay, this is the one where it's all that good information. This is a lot of good information here. Um, a lot of good overall information there. If you really want to get a breakdown for what is going on with the Pimax let me check this one real quick. This is, of course, these are people talking about MRTV's reviews and, and Glassy99 summary, interesting points, quotes. Are these the next gen devices that we enthusiasts have been waiting for and will catapult the VR industry to the next level? The answer is a resounding yes. Of course, that was Sebastian at the very beginning of his episode. The true second generation of VR headsets with wide field of view has finally arrived. Well, not quite. It will have arrived 
when thousands of Kickstarter backers have received them and then when regular people like me that didn't kickstart it can possibly order one and it appears that they're being shipped, that's when it really has arrived. And that could be mid to late January or it could be mid to late December. So I don't know that it's arrived quite yet. He admits the Pimax headsets are not perfect, but the pros outweigh the cons. And then this last quote here, there is no question at all for VR enthusiasts who want the highest immersion, immersion possible right now, these are the headsets to go for. And then we have some details, the FOV settings, distortion, black levels, um, you know, so lots of information here, God rays and all of that. And it does sound like you're, not only will you need your Pimax, you're also gonna need your 2080 Ti. Paradise Decay is checking in, what is going on? Gerard O'Hara says, what's the price for it? Chris Gould says, software drives hardware on the whole. And uh, Chris Gould says, also, I am getting enough real value out of the present gen. No games out there do not go beyond gen one. That's another question. Okay, Terry Blanchard, what is up? How's it going, Terry? Nice to see you again. The, yeah, the, the question I have with all these guys that are talking about Pimax and all these guys that are raving about Pimax is what does it actually do to the games that we have now? You know, the games that we're playing right now. Like, I haven't seen these videos, so maybe they answer this in, in some of these videos. But, like, my question for, like, Sebastian and for these different people that have it, okay, so if you're playing Winlands 2 on your Pimax 5K+, Plus, what does it do? do you, are you seeing more? Like, I want to see somebody that is playing Winlands 2 on an Oculus Rift and Winlands 2 on a Pimax 5K+, Plus, and both of them are hooked up simultaneously. They're standing in the same spot on a, on a plateau with the, you know, with all the beautiful scenery all around them. And I want to see somebody put on that Pimax headset and look to the edges to see their field of view, then take that off, then put on a Rift headset. Is there an appreciable difference if you're playing a game like Winlands 2 right now with one of these headsets? That's one of the questions. Okay, Sar N says, according to Sebastian, most games work just fine, but you need some tweaking with the PI tool. Okay, they work just fine. I mean, I know they're going to work, but do you get extra? Like, what are you getting extra? Are you seeing... For example, what I mean is when you put on that Oculus Rift headset and you're standing in this very specific spot on a ledge and I can see a tree there and I can see a tree there. My question is when I put on that Pimax, can I see the tree there and the tree there, but I also see a tree here and I see a tree here and I see a tree here and I see a tree here. That's my question. Will that work with all these games that we're playing right now? Like if I play Unknown Fate right now, if I play Kiaru and the Elixir of Life right now, if I play um, Transference right now, you know, is am I going to see anything with that, or is it just going to kind of spread everything? So that's kind of my question. That's kind of my question here. Uh, so don't really know what's going on. And D Fierce. This guy is in my fantasy football league, so just ignore this guy right here. He's probably wondering, uh, why am I not watching football right now? That's what this guy's wondering. I was at my fantasy football draft, and I was telling some of the people there that I do this show, and David D. Fierce, he's in our fantasy league. He's jumped into chat a couple of times wondering, what the hell am I doing doing this VR stuff, not watching football? I'll watch football when the show's over. I definitely will. I'll, I'll check it out when this show's over. Uh, Sar N says, there is an example in his preview with Skyrim. Um, oh, okay. So he does give you an example of seeing, you'll just see more of the world, larger field of view in game. I know you'll see more of the world, but are you seeing extra trees? Or are you seeing these trees kind of just spread? Or are you seeing extra extra trees? That's my question. Like, does it somehow take the game's game engine and give you a little bit more of, like, are you seeing stuff that you missed or are you seeing everything kind of just spread a little bit? Like, are we in this reality with short, fat people <laughs> or, or tall, skinny people? Jim Hall says, yes, extra trees. So if you really, really, really do get extra trees, 
That is kind of cool. That makes me want to check this out. That makes me want to see it. That is the Pimax 8K. D Fierce, what is your take on Pimax 8K and 5K Plus? He has no freaking idea what I'm talking about here. Chevy says, I expect the wider field of view will just allow you to see what you do now if you turned your head to each side. But yeah, just you don't have to turn your head. You just, you get this this, uh, you know, you no longer have the ski goggles. You no longer have the scuba mask. You, you have a much bigger scuba mask. I mean, I would absolutely love to try this out. I really would. There, there's no question about it. I would absolutely love to try this out. I'm kind of jealous of you guys, all you Kickstarter backers that are going to be getting this in the coming months. But you guys have pay, pay, paid, if I can speak, you guys have paid the price over all of these months, you guys have been the butt of jokes of waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. And so now you guys are going to be able to rub it in our faces with your extra field of view when you actually do get these things. Shurzad Khan City says, if the game is trash, you'll see extra trash. But that's cool, though. That is super cool, though. There's value in that, in my opinion. If I'm seeing, legitimately seeing more of the world in almost every game I'm playing, that's that's pretty fucking badass. That's pretty cool. So I will give uh, Pimax a little bit of love from that standpoint. So I'm going to go back to the web browser real quick here and just see so uh, see if there were any other things that one that jumped out to me. Now the performance, I mean, here it is, short version you at least want to have a GTX 1080 Ti, and that is bare minimum. So you really gotta jump into this game with a little bit of cash to burn because you need that GTX 1080 Ti, and you're probably gonna want to jump up to something much better. You know, you're probably gonna wanna jump up to a 2080 Ti, a 2080. This is where you're gonna need that power. Now here's the 90 hertz versus 80 hertz. No difference can be seen unless you are superhuman. 5K plus is 90 hertz, but he measured it to actually be 91 hertz, while 8K is 80 hertz. At the same settings, the 5K plus will look better than the 8K. You could increase super sampling for the 8K, but that will require even more GPU power. So it really sounds like the 5K plus is the one to get. Um, Vive Pro at least has an OLED. So yeah, Vive Pro has better black levels versus improved screen door effect, improved sweet spot, improved God rays, improved horizontal and vertical FOV, improved microphone, an actual headphone jack, hand tracking, eye tracking, lower price tag, native Oculus support, the eye tracking and all that, you know, that's coming later. So I don't know that we really can get hyped about the eye tracking part of it. I, I don't know that we can get hyped about the eye tracking part of it. And let's see, if we bounce over to Oculus. Oh, you know, here is a bit of news. This is pretty big news, actually. NVIDIA has delayed the RTX 2080 Ti by about one week. So it is going to be a one more week wait for the 2080 Ti. So everybody that was hoping to blow... $1,350 on an RTX 2080 Ti. You were hoping to blow that on September 20th. You're going to have to wait a little while. It's looking like September 27th. So it is going to be delayed about a week. Um, so that is that. And, um, you know, I'm still hoping to get my hands on a 1080 Ti. That is my dream, is just to jump to the 1080 Ti. Okay, so let's see what folks are talking about over here in chat. Um, let's see. Terry Blanchard says, I have a 1080 Ti, so my next purchase is either Pimax 5K Plus or a 2080 Ti at EBD of the month, which I'm not sure what that means. You know, honestly, if you have a 1080 Ti, Terry, I think I might go for that Pimax 5K Plus. The question is, though, so if you didn't kickstart it, when will you actually legitimately get your hands on a 5k plus it could be february 2019 which is a hell of a delay from right now like will we still be that freaking excited about the 5k plus in february of 2019 remember oculus connect 5 is later this month there could be other shoes that could drop 
later this year. Maybe LG comes out with a surprise announcement. There could be some other stuff that comes out and surprises us. Um, at uh, Paradise Decay says, at Terry Blanchard, here's my address for your old 1080 when you get your new card. Exactly. Yeah, no, I need his 1080. What are you talking about, Paradise? He might be in England, but he can ship it over to me. There's not a problem there. Um, oh, Terry Blanchard says his brother has dibs on it already. So there's that. And Chris Gould says, every time I get the prices on new GPUs, I feel like running back to console gaming. You can't go back, man. You just can't go back. This is just an expensive hobby. It's a hobby that we have to deal with. Okay, so my question for anybody in chat that is really knowledgeable at about, about all this Pimax stuff, which I'll admit I have not been covering it with Reckless Abandon, but for those of you that maybe are covering it with Reckless Abandon, when will I, as a non-Kickstarter, be able to get a 5K+, plus? And what will the actual price be just for the headset? No controllers, no lighthouses, no nothing. Does anybody have an answer for that? Because I'm not, I'm not actually, I'm actually not sure what the answer to that is. Now I'm guessing probably February 2019 it would be the first time I could order it. I think pre-orders are coming up for non-Kickstarter backers. I believe pre-orders are coming up. Um, so my question is that. And then, you know, so what is the price? What is the price for a 5K plus? I don't even know. Uh, Chris Gould says he's been playing Persistence all night on PlayStation VR and it's great. Well, you know, okay, Sar N said that pre-orders around October. So pre-orders next month for those of us that didn't jump on the bandwagon as a Kickstarter, that could be October I'm kind of leery about locking my money in with this Chinese company unless there's some way of backing out at the last second. It's almost, okay, so here's like these prices. These were the Kickstarter prices right there. But it's almost like, it's almost like I want to wait until these actual Pimax headsets are like literally like I can order it from Amazon or something and I just get it delivered where it's not a pre-order and I'm not t holding my money up for months upon a time. So I kind of have to wait for that. And that could be a freaking long wait. Asterix Gaming says, evening all. Anyone played virtual virtual reality? And, um, and earlier we had uh, Chris Gould talking about the persistence. And I just want to go back and say that early in this show today, we talked about the best recent VR games that have come out. And I have this list. I made this list. This is July, August, and September, what I think are the best. And Chris Gould says he's been playing Persistence all night on PSVR. It is a great game. Well, Chris Gould, I have the Persistence right here. It is number seven on my list. It is a great game. All of these games are great. All of these experiences are awesome, in my opinion. And then Asterix Gaming was talking about virtual, virtual reality. I ranked it here at number four. Paradise. Okay, Paradise. I don't think you were here when I put this up on earlier today. Paradise, I'm interested in your take on this list here because you've played pretty much everything I've played. And you've probably played some other games that I haven't even played. And what I did, Paradise, is I thought, I sat down and I thought for a while, what are my favorite games of July, August, and so far in September? What are my favorite games that have come out recently in VR, and how would I rank them? And I came up with this list. I'm putting Pixel Rip number one. I'm putting Windlands at number two. Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice at three. Virtual Virtual Reality at four. Even though I played it a long time ago, I'm kind of cheating because it came out on September 7th for Vibe players. Seeking Dawn, I want to I want to get more Seeking Dawn. I want to I want to experience more Seeking Dawn. Now maybe if I experience a lot more of it, it might not even make this list. Firewall Zero Hour, you know I got it pretty low for a lot of people probably. Megaton, The Persistence, Torn, and Electronauts, and then Paradise. I'll also show you the games that missed my list, the games that didn't make my list. And you'll be familiar with these games as well because you've probably played a lot of these games as well. These are the games that just missed my list. Bow to Blood didn't make it. Nog didn't make it. Tea Time Golf, much to the chagrin of Phil Yarn, did not make it. Marvel Powers United VR absolutely didn't make it. 
Unknown Fate didn't make it, not because it's like a bad game, really, but I just I haven't seen enough of it to make it. Same thing kind of with Kiaro and Vroom Kaboom. So these games did not make my list. They missed my cut, and those other games did make it. Paradise said he wouldn't put Seeking Dawn on the list. He would go with something else. He wouldn't go with Seeking Dawn. So Paradise was not really a big, huge fan of Seeking Dawn. Oh, Paradise is saying Nog and Kiaru are better than Seeking Dawn, in his opinion. So he would bump Seeking Dawn off that list, and he would probably throw Nog or Kiaru in there. You know, question for Paradise. You've been playing Kiaru and the Elixir of Life just like me. And um, we can talk about this for a second. In fact, let me see. I'll, I'll grab the Kiaru. Uh, trailer, uh, the trailer for Kiaro and the Elixir of Life, which this isn't a, a recent release. I've been playing it. Paradise has played it. The question I have for you, Paradise, did you get to that island, you know, where you're on the canoe, you're on that boat, you get to this island and there's these three things that have like a force field over them and you've got to do something to, to unlock the force field. So I'm, um, I'm guessing, Paradise, that you got past that point. And you've seen more of Kiaru. And then the other question I have for you, Paradise, is the $30 price. Do you feel like Kiaru lives up to the $30 price? So I, I, I kind of wonder about that. Paradise says he likes Seeking Dawn, but it still has a lot of bugs. And it's a bit of a grind. Um, and Chris Gold says the game I am playing the most is Last Day Defense. It is a tower defense and you got to kind of like that genre. But after updates, it's up there with brass tactics in production values. Okay, last day defense. See, there's always going to be a number of games that slip through the cracks and that we don't end up touching for whatever reason. Now, Chris Gould says, by the way, went back into Vroom Kaboom. Much improved after the update. Cockpit view is a blast. Oh, shit. I didn't hear this. They added a cockpit view? That should be like big news. I'm kind of surprised that wasn't big news. Um, Paradise says, no, I did one of the pedestals, and I do think the price is too high. Maybe it should be around 15 to 20 bucks. Yeah, okay, so you didn't get much further than I did then. So you did get past one of those things, but uh, maybe you're not that much further. You did, of course, play catch with the robot. <laughs> I did like the, uh, the voiceovers. I thought the voiceovers were pretty good, Paradise. Did you notice that Janice was voiced by uh, Jeff Kanata? I'm not sure if you're familiar with Jeff Kanata. I used to listen to the DLC podcast religiously before I got super deep into VR. And then they still cover flat games, even though Jeff will talk about VR a lot. They, they, they cover a lot of flat games, so I don't really listen to DLC with Jeff Kanata anymore. But Jeff used to be one of my favorite podcasters, and he does do the voice work for Janice in Kiaru and the Elixir of Life. Um, let's see, what else can we get into as well? You know, I was talking about all these favorite games that we've played. And, oh, you know what? The other day, I was looking for a Falcon Age reveal trailer. I couldn't find it. Let's throw this on for a second. Um, I heard some talk about this Falcon Age. I know it's coming to PlayStation 4. And it has a VR mode, uh, but this is this game Falcon Age. Let's let's check this out real quick, and then I'll jump right back into chat. But yeah, this game has a VR mode included. It's called Falcon Age, and I think it's coming later this year, maybe, or this might be in early 2019. But uh, this is another one to keep our eyes on, Falcon Age. I was trying to find this trailer the other day, and don't know what I did with it but went ahead and grabbed it again so looks pretty cool kind of eagle flight a little bit on the graphical stylings so this is Falcon Age not sure if I've seen this trailer I think the first trailer I saw was like really short Falcon Age by Outer Loop Oh, coming 2019. Okay, so this is a 2019 release. So it is not on the docket for this year. It's a little bit later. But yeah, Paradise says the voice acting really stands out. It is really professional, and that is probably the reason for the price. Yeah, I thought the voice acting was pretty damn good. And Paradise, I'm not sure if you agree with me, 
but I also feel like there's a very artistic kind of feel for Kiaro and the Elixir of Life from the standpoint that it's not so much just a game. It's kind of like a work of art and it's kind of like a, a, a point and click adventure. You know, it's kind of it's a good exploratory thing. It's a good exploratory thing. T-Dub says, did anyone try to beat Mamefan's top score in Wolfenstein 3D? Yeah, we remember Mamefan was up there at number one. Um, and Chris Gould says, it gets those good ratings for a reason. I don't remember which game he's talking about here. He's talking to SAMIK81. And, um, oh, he's saying you got to try LDD, which is, I think, that game he was talking about where it is kind of a tower defense style game. Okay, so you know what? We are about an hour in, folks. I thought maybe we can take a quick look at the various websites to see if there are any last minute stories. Of course, you know, this is Sunday, so pretty doubtful that we're going to have any major last minute stories at this point in time. And in fact, if we go to Upload VR, they're talking about the biggest PSVR releases of the week and VR game releases for September this metal slug thing. So they have not really updated anything in a little bit of time here. And then if we go to Road to VR, let's see what Road to VR. Road to VR does have this Pimax story where they have the information from the backers. They also have this story here. This is actually news that we have not reported on. Synapt Syn Synaptics has revealed a VR display chip which is targeting 1,000 PPI and foveated rendering. So this, of course, is Road to VR. So make sure you give Road to VR a little bit of love. Bounce over there and check out their stories. But Synaptics, a developer of input and display components for computers, smartphones, other devices, recently introduced a new version of its Clearview display driver chip for use with head-mounted displays. And so that sounds good. Um, we'll have to see what happens with that. Uh, Synaptic says they're currently sampling the new VR focus chip to potential customers. So hopefully they will find their way into future VR headsets as we move down the line. And Kiaru and the Elixir of Life is available now. And then Google appears to be ramping up research and development efforts for new and novel AR VR lenses. So of course, yeah, Google is definitely going to be continuing to work on that. See, this is the beautiful thing. Look at the number of Google AR VR job listings. Like, bam, shot up dramatically in August of 2018. See, that's one of the beautiful things, folks, about this hobby that we're in. What we are into. Oh, Phil Yarn. Phil Yarn is checking in late. Phil, let me tell you something. I dissed your game. Tea Time Golf. I dissed it. And let me show you what I'm talking about here. Phil, I went ahead and I ranked my 10 favorite games of the last three months. Any game that came out in July, August, and September, these are my 10 favorite, right? Pixel Ripped, Windlands, Hellblade, VR, VVVR, Seeking Dawn, Firewall Zero Hour, Persistence, Megaton, Torn, Electronauts. And I was saying that one of the games that did miss my cutoff was... Tea Time Golf, your favorite, Phil. It missed my cutoff. Bow to Blood, Nog, Marvel Powers United, Unknown Fate, Kiaro, Vroom Kaboom. They all missed my cutoff point. Of course, everybody can't be in the top 10. I still like Tea Time Golf, but what I cannot wrap my head around, <laughs> Phil Yearn says, oh, no, nah, you didn't do this to me. How could you do this to me? Tea Time Golf got let off the list. That is not cool. But what I can't wrap my head around, I can't play golf with one hand. How are you guys playing golf with one hand? I can't play golf with one hand. And I have to play golf with one hand because I need some type of PVC pipe thing that puts my two controllers on it so I can hold it like I have a, a real, you know, a real, like when you do your golf, you know, you, you hold your golf club, you have your thumbs lined up and, and you hold your golf club. Has anybody ever played golf, guys? That's how you hold your golf club. I can't do it with one hand. It just seems so wrong to me. Um, Phil says he got used to it, I guess. So you just basically, Phil, you take one hand and you just kind of go like that. <laughs> Are you basically going like that? Or do you put your other hand near it and just kind of go like that? I don't know how you do it. Okay, VR show. Epics, what's up? Epics is in the house. 
Uh, he's going to do a live stream on Pimax later today. Hey, Epix, check this out. While you're here real quick, Epix, hold on a second. Don't bounce away real quick. While you're here, check out this list. I made a list of my 10 best VR games that have released in July, August, and September. These are my favorite VR games of July, August, and September across all the major platforms. I got Pixel ripped up there at 19, uh, 1989. I got it up there at number one. I just really like what they did. Windlands 2, I'm really falling in love with Windlands 2. It's a beautiful, wonderful game. I think it is worth the 30 bucks. Hellblade, great. Virtual, virtual reality. Big fan of that. Seeking Dawn. Seeking Dawn may be ranked a bit too high here. I have not played it that much, but I want to play more of it. Firewall Zero Hour, The Persistence Megaton. Rainfall, Torn, Electronauts. These are my games that made my top 10. And then I had a number of games that didn't make my top 10. Let me show you the ones that didn't make the cutoff because I'm curious if, if uh, you know, it'd be similar for you. Bow to Blood, Nog, Tea Time Golf, Marvel Powers United, Unknown Fate, Kiaro, Vroom Kaboom. These guys barely miss this. Blah, 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 blah barely missed my cutoff so that's kind of what i'm looking at as my favorite games recently i just thought it'd kind of be cool to highlight some of the better games and then in terms of pimax epics i don't know a ton about pimax to be completely honest with you and later today i will probably watch all these different videos like i will watch sebastian's video and watch the full thing oh epic says winlands 2 has moved up to my top five all time oh my god that is that is crazy top five all time but i know what you're talking about epics because when you get into winlands 2 it's just a beautiful world man it's a beautiful magical world the music is stirring you move so effortlessly once you figure out how to do the movement you can run and jump you can platform you can jump so far you can run fast and jump. You can do your Spider-Man stuff. You're collecting things. The boss battles are freaking epic. Epics, how many bosses have you dealt with in Windlands 2? I've still only dealt with the first boss. I haven't gotten to the second boss yet. And I think Mame Fan is actually on the third boss. I was talking to Mame Fan about it. And Epic says, yeah, I've watched a few reviews myself. And yeah, going to discuss as well later. Oh, he's talking about Pimax there. And he's saying, Winlands 2 rewards you so subtly, the better you get at swinging the, the game combat. But yeah, it really is nice. Like you really start to learn how to just flick. Like you learn how to just flick. So you like keep going fast. And then you like, oh, he's on the last boss, man. So he must have really gotten into Winlands 2. And Anth uh, Paradise says, Anthony, Winlands 2 has a load of Easter eggs. Featuring VR YouTubers. Mike found his and a few others. Oh, that's cool. That's awesome. Uh, Chevy says, wow, I was going to wait for a sell on Winlands 2, but you guys are going to make me pay full price. You should have grabbed it on that pre-order deal. I'm telling you, Winlands 2, like I don't have it ranked number two right here for shits and giggles. It is a damn fine experience. It is a, well, see, I love being surrounded by a magical world and it's kind of chill. It's kind of relaxing. You don't have to like, like Windlands 2, you can kind of just chill out and vibe in the Windlands 2 world. The bosses are intense, but the rest of it, you can kind of just vibe and chill out. Chris Gold says he's still on the fence with the Windlands 2 and Pixel Ripped. I am at the stage where if I buy more games, I will just not have time to play any of them. I totally understand what you're talking about, Chris. And I don't advise people to buy games just to stack up. You know, this is not a collect-a-thon. Some people get into collecting games. And some people want to say, well, I have this game, this game, this game, and this. And it's almost like they're collecting uh, Pokemon cards or baseball cards or, or something. It's like they get into this collector's idea and they have all these games that they've never fired up. Don't do that. If you're going to buy a game... Buy a game and play it right away. Okay, Epix is saying, after the first boss, Anthony, it really opens up. Some of the vistas are absolutely breathtaking, and that is without crazy complex textured polys. Yeah, the game runs well. It looks well. It, it is this subdued kind of an art style. I haven't even touched the multiplayer either. Epix, have you screwed around with the multiplayer too much? I'm just playing it by myself, you know, because I want to experience... 
the different environments by myself before I start playing with all these other people. Because you know when you get into a multiplayer game, sometimes you immediately go into these different stages that you've never seen before. I'm playing it on normal mode. Yeah, I'm playing it on normal mode. Easy would probably be way too easy. Um, uh, Epic says, yes, he did do some co-op, not much. It's a whole new experience, but prefer solo. Yeah, I prefer solo, and then it's like, once I've sucked every little bit of juice out of the solo experience, then I'll go in the multiplayer because then I feel like I won't be spoiled, you know. And Scion VR says, I buy most of my games on sale. And when I have some free time, there is always a game I can play. I mean, if you're getting them dirt cheap, sure. But don't get caught up in the collectathon deal because Steam, let me tell you, Steam and all these different websites they know they're selling more games to people than they could ever play. And it is really starting. I used to be a collector and I have this collector's mentality. I have this hoarding mentality. My mom has a little bit of that whatever disease it is where you start hoarding things and things stack up. Like I have that in my family tree. It's like a, uh, you know, it's almost like having a disease or something. Like you want to be very careful with that. And you can really go down that road when you're on Steam and you're buying all these digital games and it turns into this collectathon. Be careful with that. I say don't buy a game until you know you're going to play the game. That's my opinion. Um, yeah, Epix knows what I'm talking about. The collector horde mentality. And when I first got on Steam and I first got exposed to the Steam sales, it was kind of a collectathon. You know, it's like buy every game there is. Um, person person says my favorite VR games are low poly simple textures which look good there's less screen door they look good it's really nice Paradise Decay says everyone in chat and Anthony what is the one game you really need to finish that you haven't he wants to finish Zing I would say for me it's on this list it's Pixel Ripped 1989 I haven't completely finished pixel ripped 1989 and it really was my favorite experience that i was playing that's why i have it number one on this list so for me it's probably pixel ripped but honestly what we're talking about here paradise that is called your pile of shame and i have a pile that is higher than the freaking empire state building my pile of shame is legendary because I have so many games that I'm about 60 to 70% of my way through that I need to go back and finish those puppies. But Epics, Paradise, you guys know what I'm dealing with here. Every day, new games, new games, new games keep coming. You guys are probably playing blind. I can tell you guys, I am playing blind right now. VR Roundtable got a preview code for Blind. I can't really talk about Blind too much because it is embargoed, but I'm playing Blind right now. Transference comes out next week. I mean, it just doesn't stop. New games are coming. We've got Jet Island coming up later. Speaking of Jet Island, Epics, Paradise Decay, are you guys trying Jet Island? What do you think about it? I know it's embargoed. We can't review it. But my question is, do you kind of like Jet Island? I like it. I li I, at first, I thought it was going to be a dud. And then I finally figured out how the controls work. And now I kind of like Jet Island. But it's no freaking Windlands 2, bro. It is no Windlands 2. Oh, Scion Vieira says, Anthony and the Pile of Shame. New channel name. Not bad. It's not bad. And it would be a highly accurate name. Terry Blanchard says he ha still hasn't finished Sanua or Winlands 1, and Paradise says he doesn't think he'll ever get to fully finish Skyrim, even though he's been in there for 250 hours. Yeah, we've got more games than we have time. It's a wonderful problem to have. We are truly blessed individuals. Paradise, Epics, me, we are blessed. We are truly blessed because we get showered upon with all these games. It's a wonderful problem to have. I love having this problem. Paradise says, like I have said before, Anthony, I play them on their embargo day. Oh, oh, okay. So you want it fresh in your mind. I get it. Yeah, no, that makes sense. See, I'll play them before embargo day, and then I'll try to play them the night 
before embargo and then the next day talk about it. Yeah, Scion VR, first world problems. Wonderful first world problems. My biggest problem is how am I going to get a 1080 Ti for a decent price? Like that is my biggest problem, not where I'm going to find shelter and food. You know, I mean, these truly are first world problems. All right, folks. Well, we have been running for well over an hour. I know the show just started to get good now. That's kind of what happens. It, it, it can happen like this. It's, oh, Chris Gould says he still hasn't finished Pong. He's got to go all the way back to Pong. And, and he's got a, a, a pile of shame that stretches to the moon and back. What was that one video game where it was like this worm that went all the way to the moon and it kept getting bigger and bigger? It's kind of like that. That's basically what Chris Gould is dealing with. But yeah, folks, I'm going to go ahead and bounce out of here. I know it's fun. We could keep going forever. But I will tell everybody I will be back tomorrow, 11 a.m. Pacific time. You know, we'll be back with another show tomorrow and we will get into all of this stuff. There will probably be a few more Pimax details that will start to kind of leak out. Everybody getting their Pimax stuff. So I'll try to look into that, try to watch all those videos, check that out. And we will be back tomorrow, 11 a.m. Another exciting week, guys. Transference, blind. It is going to be fun. So 11 a.m. Pacific time tomorrow. I will see you guys then. Once again, have a wonderful weekend, everybody. And check in tomorrow. See you then. Take it easy. Later. Later.